Hi everyone, Mike here. Thanks for tuning into KNMRD Radio stuff, guys. This is a hard video for me to record. Um, Dave Kassler, I love you. I love your channel. I've been watching you since I became a ham, and you have helped uh, me continue and to upgrade as a ham over the past few years. And you've helped uh, countless thousands of people. and And I respect you, and I trust you. But regarding the DX Commander antenna, my friend. You are just wrong. I have to say this. And the only reason I'm making this video is because this is too freaking long to type in your comments. You're very critical of this antenna, Dave, and, and I own a couple of them. They're fantastic antennas. I have tuned them way, way better uh, than you and your assistant have. And my biggest question, and, and I swear I mean this with no disrespect, I have the utmost respect for you. Did you even read the manual, Dave? I really, really question that because you're very critical of the manual and you're an engineer. I'm an idiot with a background in sales uh, and I've made three of these antennas and they work stellar and all of my SWR uh, is exponentially better than what your findings are. So this is an antenna that you need to build. You have to put it up, you have to take your measurements, you have to bring it down, you have to trim it over and over again until you can get it right. It's not just a plug and play kind of thing. So I really uh, am curious as to what you did there and, and I wanna show you. So here's the, here's the second video that I'm talking about where, I mean, first off, the, the wires on the antenna are, are, are twisted around. Not that that really matters, but there's not enough tension on it. It's pretty loose. You've got all kinds of radials on there. You don't really need that many. There's definitely some diminishing returns on that many radials on that kind of antenna. But uh, you were very critical of the instructions not being in the box. Dave, it's 2021. We've got rovers on Mars. Everything in the world is on the Internet. Paper is kind of obsolete these days. And a simple Google search for DX Commander will lead you right to m0mcx.co.uk. We click on that and we're presented right here at the top, DX Commander User Guides and Manuals. So we click on that and right here are the types of DX Commanders. Now I have a DX Commander Expedition Kit and I also have the 10 meter Classic, which is what you were building. So let's click on the 10 meter Classic and here right at the very top of it is saying, read this manual, Get accustomed with all these parts. This manual assumes you've watched the first part of the video for the DX Commander Repeat. It's just an overview. The Repeat is actually a brand new antenna, but it's, he must have done something. But it's just an overview on how to set up this antenna. Here's all the supplies. I mean, everything is very, very detailed in this. I mean, it's literally step by step taking this antenna out of the box and what an idiot like me needs... <laughs> <laughs> to understand how to build an antenna like this. Here he's talking about exchanging 30 meters for 80, 80 meters. He tells how to do this in the instructions. Here's your parts list. Some of these things uh, I didn't even see in your video. Specifically, uh, you talked about the uh, mast collapsing. These, ho these hose clamps and some tubing are specifically for that. Uh, you don't need to watch DX Commander's videos to learn how to make a DX Commander. These uh, They're certainly going to help, obviously, if, if you're more a show-me kind of person like I am, that's going to help. But, uh, you know, here's what's in each uh, DX Commander package. Make yourself familiar with these parts. The build, here, I mean, it's literally step-by-step. Step. Remove all the nuts and bolts. Place them in a tray. Inspect the aluminum plates. They can be sharp. You only need seven bolts. Extras are uh, supplied. Extend the pole fully, pull and twist, lay the pole down horizontally, perhaps on two garden chairs. I mean, he's literally telling you exactly what to do. Uh, install the SO239 where it needs to be in installed. Wrap a section of self-amalgamating tape around the SO239. Remove the bottom cap by unscrewing the cap and uh, putting on the ground plate. Prepare all hose clamp assemblies by unscrewing each hose clamp and installing some of the rubber PVC tubing to protect the tube. There it is right there in the instructions. <laughs> he missed it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like paragraph three of the second page. 
slip slip over the driven plate. I mean, it's 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 all right here, Dave. Uh, and I'm not saying this to to throw shade at all. Uh, I just think you really need to revisit this antenna, my friend. It is uh, it is a fantastic performer. You will not need a tuner at all with this antenna on the bands that you have made it for. There's no reason to use a tuner with this antenna. That defeats the entire purpose of buying this antenna if you intend to use a tuner. Now, if you only have your 40 meter element on there and you want to use an external tuner just to load it up on 80, sure, knock yourself out. But you do not need a tuner. If you're on 20, you don't need a tuner on 20 throughout the entire band or 40 or any other band. I mean, 10, yeah, that's a little big, so you might need a tuner on the higher end. But on the SSB portion, you probably don't need a tuner. Maybe CW, SSB, you might to get that 5, 6 kilohertz. That that might be a big ask, but uh, it's all right here. It's all right here. Do not make your radials yet. Cut the elements first. Now, I wonder if you just made your elements, and here's where having your assistant do this for you. He might have just cut them to these lengths and said, okay, this should work. Yeah, that's not really how it works. I mean, obviously, cut everything longer and trim to fit. Um, that goes with any antenna in the world, and, and you should know that. Um, it even says, cut your elements longer than required. So I wonder if that happened. So, I mean, it, it's, it's all right here. So now down here, he's talking about radials. You've got seven radial connection plates. You can put as many radials on this as you want, as you found out. Here he's talking about how to how to cut them and make them. And then you put the glue line heat shrink on there. Insert the fork wire connector and crimp and solder. Then you can apply the glue line heat shrink and heat it with a with a hot air gun. I mean, it's like literally every single instruction you could ever possibly ask for. Here's your element installation. This diagram right here is like okay. If I've got four wires, I'll configure it like this. If I've got if I'm using all the elements, I'm going to use all these holes. He has gone through every possible thing you could ever possibly think of uh, to make it as goof-proof as possible and to answer any kind of questions that you would ever have to come up with. Uh, I didn't need to ask Callum how to make this thing. I didn't need to ask anyone how to make this thing. I just made it, and I did a three-part video on, on how I built it. So go watch my videos, Dave, because uh, the thing works fantastic for me. It is one of my absolute favorite antennas on the face of the earth. You know, here he's talking about how he's using the shot cord around 90% full of stretch. So there, that's where how your antennas are just kind of flopping around in the in the breeze there. You know, you need to you need to tighten it up. It's a it's a nice, sexy looking antenna when it's when it's all set up and done. Here he's talking about how to set the thing up by by three guy stakes and, and paracord and the lengths of paracords that he uses. I use longer paracord, but whatever. I mean, here, make a small loop and guy it to the stake. I mean, here's like every single possible instruction you could ever think of. Do not use the supplied carabiners for guying. Go buy actual carabiners for guying it. Uh, wind gust protection. I mean, it's it goes on and on. Tuning. Here, if you follow this link, it brings you to a spreadsheet that'll do all the maths for you as far as, you know, if I want it on this specific frequency, it's going to say, okay, it should be this many meters long or this many feet and inches. It's imperial and metric. And once you put your antenna up and you take your SWR measurements, you can type in, okay, well, it's resonant here now. And then it'll tell you how much to trim or how much to add. Like there's so much work that has gone into just this instruction manual and you're just poo-pooing on it. It's Dave, you're not reading this manual. <laughs> I don't know what you're reading, but you ain't reading this. Here he's talking about 80. If you want to make 80 meters, you can run it up and run it as an inverted L and, and all kinds of different ways to do that. How can you adjust it? Maintenance, everything. It's all there. So Dave, please <laughs> do a little more research on this antenna before you start making videos. Uh, I think you need to look at it again. Uh, <laughs> and I just had to make this video because I'm such a fan of the DX Commander uh, antennas. And I'm a fan of yours. And uh, I, I, uh, I think you, you, need to, you need to redo it, buddy. So anyway, that's all I got. I just had to say this. Uh, <laughs> that's all. I'm not trying to start any wars. There's no bad blood. I'm just an antenna nerd and I'm very passionate about them. So that's all I got. 
All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening to me ramble. And uh, we'll see you again on another episode of KNM Radio Stuff. 73, guys. Uh-huh.